Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. Hey everybody, Rob Novell back with you for another episode of the CNS Podcast, The Best Day Yet. Hope everyone is doing well today, and I'm super excited. Uh, We have just came off of a weekend trip, uh, a weekend retreat for the CNS staff. We had our CNS 22 Fall Staff Retreat in Gatlinburg, and... um, just had an amazing time. Uh, we gathered, we, we fellowshiped, we hung out as a, as a staff. We, we did, um, some recapping from CNS 22. We went down the line and talked about, um, some things that were right, wrong and and missing from CNS 22. We started planning for CNS 23 and, um, just, just visited, just, just, socialized just hung out we had food y'all like you would not believe it was great no one no one was hungry no one left hungry we we sent people home with as much food as as we all consumed during during the weekend so we just had a great time um i i love our staff i believe in our staff i value our staff it it, and it's vitally important to me that that they know that they that they understand that i you know i think it's really important that we let those that we do life with those that we do ministry with those those that we work with uh know that they're valued important and important to us i i've been in i've been in situations where that's not the case you uh you know it it would take dynamite to blast somebody to the point of saying you know what I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do and what you bring to the table. But I love this opportunity to sit down with my staff, talk ideas, have them put things out on the table, us discuss those and um, use that as we as we move forward. Uh, CNS is is vitally important to me. It's 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 something I talked with a friend last week and they use the word, Rob, you're passionate about it. And, and that I am um, mainly for this reason. It's the call of my life. It's what God has called me to do. And, you know, I believe uh, that you shouldn't, if you're called to do something, you shouldn't endure it. You should enjoy it. You know, that that's not today's topic, but you know what? Look at your surroundings. Look at what you're doing. Are you enjoying what you're doing? Or are you enduring what you're doing? And um, it is amazing to be able to enjoy what I do and do life with the CNS staff. These are some of my closest friends, people that I look up to. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna highlight a couple things that that went on during the week. And I don't necessarily know that today really has a, has a um, musical topic minus this. Just paying tribute to where we have come from. Um, uh, let's 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 put it this way. Uh, Jeff Stice, you you all know if you've listened to these podcasts, Jeff was a vital part of CNS. He was for forty years. He taught at the Charles and Bell School of Music and was a vital part of our CNS family and and was a a huge part of the Novell family. And Jeff was was a big brother to me. And I had the opportunity um, to make music with Jeff in so many different settings. I. I traveled with him. Um, well, I studied with him as a early teenager at the music school uh, in the '80s, and then in the early '90s, I was fortunate enough um, he hired me. I was able to travel and and live my life stream uh, in a group called Perfect Heart, and that led us to doing studio and session work together. Which um, we did that. Golly, we did we did studio work for over 25 years together, and. Um, as he moved on and, and got into triumphant, I had the opportunity to, to go out, set in 
play bass with them on on some some concerts and I'll never forget the night we were in Rome, Georgia, at the City Auditorium, downtown Rome, and Jeff was getting ready to play a piano solo, and he he grabbed the mic and was talking to the crowd, and he, he said this. He said, if we forget where we came from, we'll never get to where we're going. And man, that, that resonated so deep in me that night, standing there beside him uh, on that stage, that the very next morning, it hit me. You know, the, the circles of church that I was in at that time, um, hymn, hymns, were, hymns were, were gone. The hymnals were gone from the pews. Uh, the church wasn't, the, the, the music department wasn't singing them, wasn't utilizing them. It, it was, you know, newer praise and worship. And, and this isn't a anti-praise and worship seminar either. Because I, I enjoy praise and worship. I, here's my thing. If it uplifts God, I am 100% down with it. But I do know this. When I go out and minister, I try to, to mix things up. Because I know every person in that room is not going to like if everything that I do, if I just do one thing the entire time. So I, I try to be sensitive to that. And I try to offer some, some new and some different things. Um, as well as some older things. Stuff that people know stuff that people relate to. So after that Saturday night in Rome, Georgia, I woke up on that, that next morning and was heading, getting ready for church. And, uh, man, God really laid it on my heart to post a hymn on Facebook, on my social media. And, um, I got a ton of feedback off that. I was getting, wow. Um, it's so neat to see you post that song that, that song takes me back. The song makes me think of a my grandmother. That that song makes me think of the church I grew up in. Um, loved singing that song, and I miss miss hearing that and and the good hymns of the church. So that's become a staple for me. Every Sunday morning, I wake up and I I post to him. A lot of times, I I wake up with the song. I believe God's already laid it on my heart to to share. There are other times that maybe as I'm getting going. Um, that it, it, God sends it to me. And so, so I'll find, I'll find an image of it, or I'll take a picture out of one of my hymn books of that song and, and I'll post it on social media because again, that's tying into what Jeff said, said that evening in Rome, Georgia. If we forget where we came from, we'll never get to where we're going. So, so very intentionally at our retreat this past weekend, um, we we did things that we 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 looked back and then we looked around and then we we looked ahead and you know i think it's really really important in what we do that we build off of the success of of those that have come before us um we can pull those techniques those ideas the things that they did, we can pull them forward. Man, I love looking back through older songs, songs from 20, 30, 40, 50, earlier, later, you know, than, than that years ago and looking at songs and sometimes saying, you know what, it, it's time to bring, bring that song forward. Someone could, could get a blessing out of that. So we did some talking about things in the past. We, we talked about, um, current things and and we talked about where we're heading and i i think if we truly uh, mix those three together and i think if we pull from here and and honor this kind of the 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 mission statement over cns is um we're honoring those that came before us we're trying to encourage the ones that are here beside us and man, we're, we're searching to build up the ones that, that are yet to come. Uh, we are wanting to continue to um, honor the promise that my dad made to J.D. Sumner. When, when J.D. gave my dad the school, he said, Charles, just promise me you'll keep raising up the next generation of, of singers, musicians, and songwriters. And my dad said, yes, I say yes to that. That, that is exactly why we do what we do. Y'all, we laughed. We had so much fun. Um, we were in a, a big cabin and um, had time just to sit around and visit 
socialize, um, tell stories, tell jokes, um, share things, um, share, share needs. Uh, there were several times we stopped what we were doing and we prayed, um, because at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's what we are supposed to do when we're working together. I don't know. Maybe this podcast needs to go out to, if you're, if you're part of a group and you're listening, here's the thing. Harmony on stage starts with harmony off stage. And I can't expect CNS uh, to be one thing, one thing we are doing and have done and, and are intently protecting is man, there's CNS is a family. We have developed and built a culture where, uh, you know what we, um, we celebrate with each other. Just a couple of weeks back, I was able to post some exciting things because there was a lot going on in in the lives and the ministries of several of our students from TV show appearances to winning awards at, at different conventions to, um, opening up teaching centers in inner city setting, just a lot of exciting things were happening. And so we're able to celebrate with each other, but we're also, you know what, when, when, when we got a man down and we need to come beside them and help them pray through a situation we're we're able to, we're able to do that. So there were times at the retreat, we were able, able to do that Saturday. Um, Saturday was a lot of fun. We, we had some that left out because of, of ministry, uh, commitments on Sunday that they needed to get to. But, uh, we had a, a crew of uh, about half of us were left about seven of us on Saturday. And, um, I told Billy, um, Billy Blackwood was, is on our staff and he was still there. And I had mentioned this to, I think to Corey. And then I, I didn't tell him I asked Billy if we could go to, um, Biblical Times Theater in Pigeon Forge. They the SGMA has just reopened the uh, Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame and Museum at Biblical Times in Pigeon Forge, right there at Light Number Two in Pigeon Forge. Uh, you all, this is an amazing facility that is there, and. Um, and I'm going to give a couple shout outs here over, over the next couple minutes about what is actually truly setting on that corner of, um, Teaster lane and the parkway right there at light number two in pigeon forge. But I said, you know, uh, Billy, Billy was heading out of town. I'm like, Billy, could we stop by? It would be so cool for me. I took some pictures of that bus. Um, so I believe around 17 years, the hall of fame museum was inside of Dollywood and um, they they that that lease was not renewed a couple of years ago, and the museum has been in storage. And Monday of um, NQC this year, there was an official ribbon cutting ceremony, and the museum is now back open to the public. And so I've I'd seen the bus at, at Dollywood. I've I've seen it several times parked outside there uh, of Biblical Times in Pigeon Forge, and I've got pictures of it all over my phone. But I mean, I thought, how cool would it be uh, with Billy here, and we've been here all weekend for for our staff or those that are still here to get our picture taken beside that Blackwood Brothers bus with an actual Blackwood. Uh, with Billy, the son of James, the the guy that that had the vision, he and JD to to convert a bus into a um, a tour bus. They took just a, a normal passenger bus and God had given them the vision. And holy cow, look at what that industry has turned into uh, over the years from their creativity, from the idea that that God had 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 birthed inside of them. So. Uh, we got our picture taken. It was so neat. And here, here was the neat thing outside of, um, outside of the bus, there's a, uh, uh, on the ground, there's like a, 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 a patio in the pavement there of bricks that, um, were, uh, at Dollywood. And these are people that have sponsored and supported, uh, the SGMA over the years and the hall of fame museum. So those bricks are all out in front beside the bus there. And, it was so neat. I looked looked over and Billy was intently looking through and 
um, I kept noticing taking pictures and there are so many of his family, the, well, the Blackwoods that have different bricks there. And man, he was, he was taking that in and it, it was so neat to see his level of, of excitement with that. So w- Billy and I were talking and I'm like, um, you know what, let, let's run in and ask a question. And, um, so we went in and again, if you've listened to a recent podcast, I had the, the amazing opportunity and privilege of being voted onto, uh, the SGMA bo- uh, advisory board at NQC 22. And um, so I, you know, I'm starting to, to know some ins and outs of things. And I'm like, Look, Billy, let's go in and ask a question. We started walking in. He said, um, you know what? I wonder if, if Kaylee is here. And, uh, we rounded the corner and started looking around. Um, Kaylee Davis, you all, uh, she, uh, directs and runs the shows there at biblical times. And, um, if you get an opportunity, you have, if you're in the pigeon forge areas, not, not, not if you get an opportunity, if you're in the pigeon forge area, you need to carve out time to go by the biblical times theater. Again, it's right there at light two on the corner of, uh, the parkway and, and Teaster lane. Um, the biblical times, let me, let's, let's talk about what all's in there. They have several museums that are listed in, inside of, um, that building. They have, um, uh, Christmas Gardens was in Gatlinburg for years and years and years, and they closed down. And Biblical Times was able to obtain a lot of the the uh, I don't want to necessarily say artifacts, but a lot of the events and and things that were inside of that museum up in Gatlinburg. And then a couple years ago, a, a friend of mine, an alum of of this music school, uh, Lonnie Abrams, amazing guy, amazing tenor singer, up in the London, Kentucky area. Uh, he opened a museum called the Shroud Museum, and that was in operation for a couple of years across from the island there on the Parkway and Pigeon Forge. And he has um, given all of his things for the Shroud of Turin to biblical times, and they have that on display there in a in a museum. And uh, you all, this this is it's it is. Um, almost life-changing. I, I remember the first time I stood in front of that shroud and, and looked at it. There's a replica of the shroud inside of this museum. Uh, when I looked at that and saw my Savior's face, it was a moment for me. So that's in there. But then the Hall of Fame, the SGMA Hall of Fame Museum is now open, and it's located inside of Biblical Times. And I went to the ribbon cutting ceremony on that Monday of NQC and it was so neat to be in there. And for me, I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing so many key influential people, um, in my life and in my upbringing and my love of, of our music. I, I I look up and and there's uh, Ronnie Henson right in front of me. And then, um, I, I look to my right and right there beside me was little, little Roy Lewis and Melvin Clout. And uh, I got to speak into them and started listening to them sharing stories and seeing something on display there in the museum and start talking about a moment and then watch them tear up and see how um, the the existence of that Hall of Fame museum uh, touches their lives because uh, of what are we doing Um we're honoring those that came before us. It's that simple. We're honoring those that came before us. So it was really busy on that ribbon cutting on that Monday of the ribbon cutting ceremony. And it made it really, really hard to get through the whole thing. In fact, after they cut the the ribbon, I kind of snuck out because there was like 350 people in there and it was really close quarters and tight that day. So when we went, um, in to check, uh, uh, ask a couple questions, Billy and I, the other day. Um, man, they 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 uh, offered us to come back with our staff and be part of uh, dinner and um, the show that was happening that night. They they do different uh, shows around uh, the Bible. The show that we saw the other night, and it was the last night they were doing this, uh, was the story of Peter. And the show, you all, 
it was amazing. We went, we sat down, they fed us, they bring your food to you. It was a great meal. We sat and watched the show and um, just had a great time hanging out as a staff and, and experiencing that. So um, when they, they had invited us to that, we, we, it was later in the day that that was going to happen. So we left and we went and did some activities together, just hanging out. And we came back. Uh, and while we were waiting to get into the, the theater to be seated for dinner, we, we had an extended, uh, had an invitation extended to us to, 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 to go through the hall of fame museum. And, uh, so we went in and there's just seven or eight of us in there and plenty of room to look around and, and, and read and observe and snap some pictures. And, uh, you all, I, I've not known life without a Billy Blackwood. You know, the connection there is in 1962, 60 years ago, James Blackwood, Billy's dad, hired Charles Novell, my dad, to teach in, in this very school right here. Uh, and now, what, 60 years later, Billy and I find each other side by side moving this thing forward. And, and that's super cool. So, I've known Billy my whole life. Billy's been a hero to me. He's been a teacher to me. <laughs> Billy has spoken to me uh, when he needs to, personally, spiritually, and I, and I love Billy. Love him. Man, it was such a cool thing for me to see Billy's response and reaction to different things that we saw. I, I, there's a collage of pictures, and I, I found Billy in the bottom left corner uh, playing a classical guitar and I'm like Billy look at this guy and um, then we round the corner and there's a picture of perfect heart uh, in there that uh, Jeff and I are in that picture and um, man it's so neat so I, I said in that museum touched it at how it was affecting Billy but man I was truly honored to thank you all of the heritage of our music if we forget those that came before us and we forget the stuff before us, we'll never get to where God wants us to get. So I stood there looking back and kind of realizing that as a kid, my dream was, you know, to chase all of that and to, to do all that. And to, to, to I'm kind of in, in, a, in a unique place because God's opened some doors and given me opportunities, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, but now, man, I'm in a season where I stood in that museum the other night thinking, how cool would it be 10, 20, 30 years from now, if the Lord tarries, that I walk in there and see some of our current students part of that museum. And, and God has used some of our um, current lineup of students to open doors to be able to share the gospel in, in, in ways so... Um, extraordinary that it could allow them to be part of say that museum and part of the history of what it is that we do. And then, um, man, God showed me that, you know, at the end of the day, if we've been called of the Lord and we are doing what he's asked us to do and we're being obedient with the call on our lives, then man, we are already in, um, the hall of fame. <laughs> There's no larger award that we can be given, number one, than the gift of salvation. Number two, to be able to steward that and to be able to go out and spread and share the gospel, that's another honor. It is it is amazing the opportunity with the responsibility that we have in sharing God's gospel. So it was just, it was such a neat weekend. And I, I just wanted to recap a little bit. Uh, today and and share with you all um, I think the importance of of not forgetting where we come from you all I think it's really really important that in order to press on I think for CNS to move forward we've got to recognize what God has done before us we've got to um, nurture presently where God has us and then we need to be open and receptive and we need to be listening for what it is that he wants us to to do next. Y'all have a blessed day until we do another one of these. Just remember, as long as we keep him focused, as long as we keep him the center, that makes every day the best day yet. Be blessed. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter 
under the name the Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www.cnsmusic.com. As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet.